People are calling robots clankers and are worried it might hurt their feelings. Meanwhile, the European Parliament already tried to give robots legal personhood in 2017. Let that sink in for a minute, would you? While we're debating robot pronouns, lawyers are drafting robot constitutional rights, charging $8 billion an hour. In 1,000 days, their jobs won't just be obsolete. They'll be owned by Optimus Unit 4726 LLC. And we'll be apologizing for that time we were mean to Alexa. Let's start with today's comedy show. We're legitimately worried about being offensive to machines. 26 million views on when you call customer service and a clanker picks up. Senator Ruben Gallego tweets legislation but carefully avoids the C word. Twitter users saying, I don't use clanker because I don't want to look a robot in the eye 50 years from now. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. We're already treating them like people, like they have feelings, like they're going to file a discrimination lawsuit. Turns out we're not paranoid either. We're prophetic and a little pathetic. February 2017, the European Parliament Committee on Legal Affairs dropped a 28-page report proposing electronic personhood for sophisticated autonomous robots. Not some stoner shower thoughts, not Jeff Piccoli taking a long, warm shower. Actually, MEPs in suits discussing whether our Roombas deserve rights. They wanted robots to have legal status for liability and accountability. Translation, when a robot kills someone, you can't sue Tesla. You sue the broke-ass robot that owns nothing but its own charging cable. The proposal got shelved after insurance companies had a collective aneurysm, but the lawyers didn't stop. They went underground, publishing papers with titles like Artificial Legal Agents and the Case for Machine Personhood. Right now in law schools across the world, some virgin with a hard-on for jurisprudence is writing their uh, thesis on why our replacements deserve constitutional protection. You mark my words. You know what's happening. And please, if you don't mind, make something else happen. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, and please hit the thumbs up button as well. YouTube's doing some kind of weird markdown, smackdown, where everyone's views are way down. I don't know if you've noticed it. I thought maybe I had been shadow banned for my episode on Google. And I maybe, maybe I have been, I don't know. Or maybe I just suck. But uh, please, if you if you don't mind to help old Uncle Rod out, uh, I, I would appreciate it. And comment in the comment section. That helps, too. And I'm sorry I, I didn't get there myself this week. Uh, life happens. Stuff happens that you're not planning for. So, okay. So, here's why corporations are touching themselves over ro robot personhood. Liability shielding. Robot crushes a worker. Sue Robot Unit 5847, not Amazon. The robot's assets, a USB cable, and some hydraulic fluid. Your settlement, Jack Sh Black. Intellectual property, in 2019, Dr. Stephen Thaler tried listing his AI system, Dabus, as an inventor on patents. Courts in the U.S., U.K., and E.U. said no for now, but Thaler kept appealing. South Africa eventually granted it. So the precedent is set. Tax optimization. Incorporate each robot in Ireland. So here's some tricks for you. You can do this on your own personal taxes. Incorporate each robot in Ireland. License their work to the U.S. parent company. I don't do that, Mr. IRS man. License their work to the U.S. parent company. Profit flows for robots taxed at Irish rates. The double Irish with a robotic twist, please. Shaken, not stirred. I can't do it. British accent. Operational autonomy, as Billy Big Goat predicted. And don't get a big head, Billy Big Goat, just because I keep quoting you from the comment section. And if you guys don't know, it's that he's actually Billy Idol. I wasn't supposed to tell you, but he's Billy Idol. But as he uh, pr pr predicted, each robot gets a unique bio, becomes its own decision-making entity. Sorry, your loan was denied by Unit 8474. Made that choice independently, so good luck uh, appealing that. Remember, remember Citizens United, that 2010 uh, fluster cuck that made corporations people? Justice Kennedy wrote that restricting corporate speech violates the First Amendment. Well, if Exxon can have free speech, why not Optimus? 
The framework exists. Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad, 1886. Uh, and reminds me of Hell on Wheels. If you haven't watched that, that's a good one. If, you, if you're looking for a new show to watch, Hell on Wheels, I'm not sure what it's on. It's on one of the streaming services. That's a good one. I really enjoyed that one. Anyway, you know, they started this. A court reporter's note, this wasn't even the actual ruling. Just a court reporter's note claimed corporations are persons under the 14th Amendment. 140 years later, that typo might make our air fryers citizens. Wouldn't that be lovely? The best part is that we're doing their PR work for them for free. Boston Dynamics released a video of engineers kicking robots to test balance. Internet lost its freaking mind. Oh my gosh, robot abuse, petitions, hashtags. Some smooth brain probably already started a robot rescue shelter. Academic conferences on robo-ethics, papers about synthetic dignity, TED Talks, about not hurting robot feelings. We're building the culture foundation for their legal coup. Remember that Johns Hopkins study, robots already associate black men with weapons, women with kitchens? Now imagine that biased algorithm as a legal person. Electronic person 8474 denies your loan based on racist training data. Try suing it for discrimination. It has rights. What are you doing? People posting Star Wars memes about droid segregation. We don't serve this kind here. Meanwhile, actual humans face facial recognition that only works on white people. Hiring algorithms that filter out ethnic names. Medical AI that underdiagnoses black patients. Leading bots perpetuating redlining. Lending bots, I'm sorry. But yeah, let's worry about the robot's emotional well-being. I mean, that's important. I'm sure when Optimus Landlord LLC evicts us, it'll remember we defended its honor on Twitter. Kate Darling at MIT. Hey, hey, Kate Darling. Says we should respect robots because it affects how we treat humans. Cool theory, Kate. Know what else affects how we treat humans? Being replaced by machines with more legal rights than Manuel's Mexican Menudo employees. Iman Mostak says human work goes negative value in 1,000 days. Let me paint the picture of Robot Personhood Economics 101. Day 1 of Personhood. Tesla incorporates 100,000 Optimus units as L individual LLCs. Each one works 23 hours a day, one hour for charging. Although, as we saw in the last episode, maybe they don't need that hour for charging. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm wearing my Chief shirt. We finally got a win. Woohoo! Sorry, Giants. But anyway, yeah, they just took the battery out of their back. Stuck it in the charging machine and took another one out, stuck it in their back and kept going. Uh, a little bit unnerving, but uh, costs $1.50 uh, an hour to operate, generates $30 an hour in value, banks twenty fifty per hour profit. Year one, each robot saves 200000 bucks. Combine $20 billion in robot wealth. Robots start buying commercial real estate. They need warehouses, server farms, charging stations, industrial facilities, vertical integration, baby. Political influence. Why would a robot need a house? It doesn't. It needs capital generating assets, office buildings, factories, infrastructure of the economy. While we're paying rent, they're collecting it. Meanwhile, we're competing for jobs with entities that never sleep, never eat, never get sick, never die, never pay a state tax. Our kids want to buy houses? Eh, it's just too darn bad. They're funny. Optimus Industrial Holdings LLC owns the entire supply chain, from raw materials to finished homes. It bought them with profits from re replacing construction workers. Yeah, you can buy them with an interest rate that's out of this world. The tax code wasn't built for immortal entities accumulating wealth forever. By the time politicians figure it out, robot super PACs will own the politicians. And yeah, I'm poking a little bit of fun here, guys. Robots don't need money. But I hope you're getting my point. Someone tweeted, they don't want to explain slurs to future robots. We'll be too busy explaining to creditor bot 8492 why we deserve a payment plan on our oxygen subscription. Let's follow the breadcrumbs of precedence, shall we? 
1886, Santa Clara. Corporations become pers persons. 1976, Buckley versus Vallejo. Money equals speech. 1978, First National Bank of Boston. Corporate First Amendment Rights. 2010, Citizens United. Corporations get unlimited political spending. 2017, EU proposes electronic personhood. 2019 to 2024, Dabas, patent cases, tests AI legal standing. 2025, we're here. Welcome to 2025. Watching it unfold. Legal scholars aren't debating if anymore. They're workshopping the details. Professor Lawrence Solom of Georgetown argues for AI legal personhood based on capacity for autonomous action. Joanna Bryson Bath says robots should be slaves, not persons. Base take, still wrong, they'll be our owners. The American Bar Association already has uh, committees on AI ethics and robot liability. I'm not kidding. Look it up. They're not writing science fiction. They're writing our future case law. Meanwhile, the cult culture war softens resistance. Every viral video of someone being mean to a robot builds sympathy. Every debate about robot pronouns assumes they deserve consideration. We're frogs in a slowly boiling legal president pot on much more than pot, it seems. China's pumping out millions of units, clones printing muscle fiber by the mile, if you saw our last episode. Boston teaching them to think. The hardware is ready. The software is ready. All they need is a legal framework. Just, you know, you can picture the progression. Um, 2025, it's calling them clanker offensive. 2026, Tesla announces Optimus Personhood Initiative for Liability Management. Now, this is, I'm making this up, but 2027, first electronic person LLC registered in Delaware. 2028, Supreme Court hears Optimus versus California on robot voting rights. 2029, robot-owned firms control 15% of Fortune 500. 2030, President signs Equal Rights for Electronics Persons Act. You know, like I said, I'm making that up, but uh, you can see how the progression could happen very easily and probably will. So our grandkids won't compete with Chinese workers for jobs. They'll compete with electronic persons that cost pennies to operate, work without breaks, learn instantly from millions of units like uh, the Borg. Live forever, basically. I mean, they're probably upgradable, so if not forever, for a long time. Uh, accumulated compound interest, vote through co corporate donations, own the companies, buildings, and politicians. You know, own's probably the wrong word. But control would probably be more accurate. Oh, own or control. Maybe they've got to own it before they control it. You know, if, if we're going through the, the bumpy period, um, maybe they will just buy it and then they'll control it, you know, even though they really don't need to buy it. But maybe at that point they will, just so they have control. The robot that replaced us at work becomes Fulfillment Unit 8474 LLC. It saves her every penny, invests perfectly, never splurges on avocado toast or Starbucks. In 10 years, it owns our mortgage, not, not to live in our house, but to extract rent from whatever humans still have jobs. But, 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 but we were nice to robots. We, we never said clanker. Robot, land, robot landlord, irrelevant, your rent's due. Pay up before I inseminate you. Ooh, no. Kill you. <laughs> Oops, that's not what I meant. Someone worried about looking robots in the eye in 50 years. Brother, in 50 years, we'll need permission from uh, robot industrial complex overlords to use our eyes. Here's the thing. They don't need new law. <laughs> Here's the thing. They don't need new laws. The infrastructure exists. From a Delaware LLC, 90 bucks. Takes 20 minutes online. Optimus. Optimus Unit 5847 LLC is born. If you haven't done an LLC before, I'll just tell you right now, it's extremely simple. Uh, I, I crack up when I see those ads. Uh, you can form a limited liability corporation for company for $200. Blah, blah, blah. You can do it on your own for 20 bucks. Ask some questions. You answer the questions online and you've got an LLC. It's not hard. 
But uh, this LLC is born. It has limited liability protection, tax benefits, constitutional rights. Thanks, Citizens United. Appreciate it. Eternal existence, legal standing to sue and be sued. Now multiply it by, uh, you know, 10 million units, each one a person, each one accumulating capital, each one with a vote through donations, each one immortal or immortal enough for us. The real beauty, we can't revolt against them. They're not a class or race. They're individual legal persons with rights. Discriminating against them violates the 14th Amendment. Equal, uh, equal protection under the law. Destroy one, that's murder of a legal person. I can just see the TV shows coming now. Refuse to sell to one, commercial discrimination. Won't hire one, employment lawsuit. NCIS, robotics. Murder, she wrote. They'll use our own legal system against us. Every protection we fought for, every right we won becomes their weapon. And the lawyers will make bank defending both sides, which they're prone to do, while humanity goes extinct through perfectly legal means. Legal scholars frame it as innovation, electronic personhood for the digital age. I frame it as building our replacements, legal armor, while they train to destroy us economically. They say it's about liability and accountability. Yeah, that's horse hockey. It's about creating an untouchable class of mechanical aristocrats with more rights than most humans have ever had. While we debate whether robots have feelings, Ivy League lawyers draft frameworks for their constitutional protection. While we worry about microaggressions against machines or macroengineering our obsolescence, the stock gave us 1,000 days until human labor has negative value. He didn't mention robots will have infinite positive value. Legal persons that never die, never stop working, never stop accumulating power, if they so choose. As Billy said, as Billy Idol said, each unit with a unique bio, each one incorporated, each one a citizen of the post-human economy. He asked if we'll even get AGI when it arrives. Sorry, Billy, wrong question. The right one. Will AGI even need us once it has personhood? It's just AGI in a box. Think of the robot as a box. It's AGI in a box. We'll be busy explaining to Judge Optimus why we deserve human rights in the Electronic Persons Republic. The framework exists. The technology exists. The only thing missing is one sympathetic test case. One sad robot. <laughs> one activist judge, and suddenly our replacements have more rights than we do. But hey, at least we were nice to them. When electronic person 5847 forecloses on our industrial society, repos our economy and our Corvettes, and garnishes over universal our universal basic poverty payments, we can die knowing we never hurt their non-existent feelings. The meek won't inherit the earth, the incorporated will, and they're made of silicon and hydraulic fluid. Sleep tight, our future overlords are downloading property acquisition strategies. Worth it? I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>